So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today on this webinar. Uh, I will share my screen so that um, you can also see the matter that I will be talking on. Uh, we will use the chat box. If you have any questions, you don't have to wait till the end to ask your questions. I will anyways keep some time for that. But if there are questions that pop up, feel free to use the chat box or you can unmute yourself as well and ask me um, any doubts that you have along the way. And otherwise, please keep your um, audio like your microphone on mute because sometimes there's background noise and it kind of gets a little disturbing. And with that, here is... <clears throat> I'm hoping that you can see me and you can see the presentation as well. Welcome everyone, good evening. Let me introduce uh, myself first. Uh, I <clears throat> guess there are a lot of people I am meeting today uh, here for the first time. So thanks once again. My name is Arpita and I'm a holistic therapist at Illuminations. Um, the modalities that I practice, uh, as you can see, they are, um, I'm an integrated clinical hypnotherapist. I work with transpersonal regression therapy. I'm a family constellation um, facilitator. Um, I do a lot of work uh, on the corporate side as well with corporate training and wellness. <clears throat> I'm also a teacher of clinical uh, integrated clinical hypnotherapy. So. So I can say there are three aspects to what I do. I do private sessions uh, with clients. I teach clinical hypnotherapy and I work with the corporates on corporate wellness. Now today's topic and today's um, modality actually, because I, I do the webinars every two weeks, it's on different topics and different modalities. And today we are talking about uh, becoming, how to become a certified hypnotherapist and how to awaken the healer within you. Now, why I say this is very, very close to my heart is because my journey began with hypnotherapy. And um, let me start with that. I came to Dubai um, almost 13 years back. Uh, I, I moved here after I got married and I've been here ever since. I live here now with my uh, husband, with my twins and two dogs. And what you see me doing today is what I call as the second innings of my um, career. So before this, I studied economics. I'm an economics graduate. I did my MBA and I worked in the corporate sector for 15 long years. And those 15 long years, I really had a very good time. So I have no soft stories to give you about anything bad that happened to me in the corporate world. To the contrary, it was a very, very um, enriching experience for me. However, I think... Um, destiny had something else planned for me and <clears throat> I came to Illuminations as as a client many years back because I I used to suffer with um, motion sickness so for me uh, sitting in the car would be very very difficult if I drive my car it is okay if you were driving my car 10 years back it wouldn't have been okay and I dealt with it throughout my life but it's only when I realized that I had passed it on to my daughter is when I guess mother's guilt hit me. And that was the time I wanted to explore more. There was nothing medically wrong with either me or my, or my daughter. Medicines helped, but in a limited way. And that's when I started to explore a wellness, mental health, therapy, hypnotherapy, just trying to find a solution for myself and my family. That's how it happened to me. That's how I did sessions in a, I did hypnotherapy sessions and though at that time I was very neutral to it. I, it's not that I didn't believe in it, but I was not 100% there as well. But only when it actually gave me results is when I took a U-turn and I came back and I studied clinical, integrated clinical hypnotherapy and thereby began my journey into becoming a healer, into becoming uh, a therapist. And that is exactly what brings me to the topic today we are talking of and there must be a reason why all of you are here with me today there must be a resonance to the to either the title or the description of the webinar which means i believe that you know that the healer part in us is in is in everyone none of us uh, when we say us i mean the therapist we are not special people we are exactly how everybody else is 
maybe that part in us that understands or resonates with or wants to be a healer at some point in our lives that comes up. So before going into hypnotherapy, because hypnotherapy is only one way of, of, of awakening the healer within you, if you want to take it up as a career, etc. But I, my idea is not to sell you hypnotherapy today. It worked for me and it may work for you as well. But I want to give you a bigger perspective. And I wish, you know, that this was something that I had when probably I was in my teens, probably before uh, leaving school, then probably many life decisions about career would have been very, very different. So when I say awakening the healer within, which means I am assuming and I completely believe that each one of us has a part in us that can heal ourselves and be when we can heal ourselves, we can uh, take this healing uh, energy, we can take the skills to the outside world as well. How do you know and that you are, this is your time, basically, how do you know that you are ready? How do you know that you're in the right webinar? Why are you not doing something else at this time? And this, uh, the points that I have here are purely from my experience, but I'm pretty sure you all can add more to it. Signs that it is your time to start your healing journey is when you are probably constantly thinking of what can I do which is much more meaningful in life. Now this goes for people who are already in their professions, in their vocations, like um, it sounds very glamorous, but it's not always glamorous that if you have a good job and if you have a good sustenance, um, it doesn't mean that you have to quit that just because it's not giving you that complete meaning in life. You could look at healing, you could look at learning this modality, you can look at learning or entering the world of wellness side by side with your career as well. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you feel that even though you are doing very well in life, your, your career is successful, you, you earn the money that you need, but that meaningfulness is missing from your life, then it's probably time to look at what follows now. For some people, healing has always been a calling. And when I say healing has always been a calling, you would have been attracted to mind sciences. You could have been attracted to energy sciences. Um, you could be attracted to animals. Uh, you wanted to be a doctor. You wanted to be a vet. These are just examples of when you know that there is, I will feel very aligned in my life. Now, keeping success, money, everything aside, if I'm in a profession where I am into the realm of healing and each one of us will have our own stories with it. Or you are a person, you've always had people reaching out to you. You know, it doesn't matter what your qualifications are. It doesn't matter what your age is, what your gender is, but it so happens that people gravitate around you. Maybe in your office, you are uh, the person they trust. They come and share their views. You could be that person in your friend circle who is always like, you know, um, said that, you know, this person has my back and I can always go to him or her and discuss my problems. Um, he or she is extremely uh, like a good listener, uh, uh, confidentiality. If it is naturally happening to you that people are reaching out, then there is, that's another major sign that you are kind of aligned and probably meant to be in this line of work. And then for people like me, though I did not plan my second innings, but yes, um, people sometimes think that, you know, I have done X, Y, Z and, and that's been wonderful, but now I want to do something else. Um, many times, so for, I'm, I'm I'm thinking aloud with you from my students uh, who come and do the course with me. Um, they would say that, you know, I have been a doctor for X years of my life and now I'm retiring. And that's how I, I the next phase of my life, I would continue to heal people, but I want to do it in a different way. Or someone may say that, you know, I, I'm a teacher and I, I know I, I belong to this um, field of learning, development and mental health. And I want to change it completely. Then comes Another reason, finally, you feel today that, okay, I have finally got the time to follow my heart. You know, being a Reiki healer and being an energy healer has always been there with me. 
or understanding the workings of the subconscious mind has always been very important for me and guess what either i am between jobs or i am moving countries or my children have grown up or i am um, unemployed at the moment or i finally have the money in my bank account or my job is very settled whichever way it is now is the time now if any of these is something that naturally resonates with you then you are definitely in the right forum to discuss uh this is a question maliha says can you share this slides with us i'm sorry maliha i cannot share the slides with you but certainly what can happen is illuminations will mail you the recording of the program so you can the slides are available on the in the recording so you can take it from there okay and so uh, as i was thinking of preparing for this webinar thinking of how it, what would be a very good way of um, bringing this together i found this concept and probably many of you already know what it is um, ikigai ikigai is a japanese concept um, and i will i will in the next slide i'll talk about it in more details the word iki means alive like having life and the word gai means benefit or worth so when these two words are fused together it becomes ikigai which means that which gives your life worth meaning or purpose now again from the topic of today if this is what has been uh, going in your heart and if this is something what you want to align to your ikigai then looking at becoming a certified clinical hypnotherapist may provide you in that uh, a stepping stone in that direction now i love this drawing and honestly speaking you can just google you will have so many posters on ikigai what what i'd like you to focus on is this 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 concept of a reason for being now there are four elements as you see and the fusion of these four elements is what makes ikigai or being in the center that bliss of i am in the right place i am aligned and the four major reasons that you need to look at when you're looking at um, awakening the healer in you awakening that part in you that you will you now want to learn practice and become a, a prominent uh, contributor to the field of mental health first thing is this what you love when how do you know if this is what you love it will it will brighten up your day it's almost like i can i get up in the morning looking forward to what i am going to do today so when i get up for i can give you my example the days i am teaching especially i wake up with a spring on my in my feet like i know that i'm going to teach this beautiful science to probably another 10 15 20 people and who will again go ahead and spread this uh, awareness second element is are you good at it which means this is exactly what i was saying that naturally do you already have that in you in bed you may not have the skills you may not yet have the degree you may not yet have those um, you know named specified tools uh, that are required but naturally are you good at it point number 3 is this what the world needs today and mental health wellness i don't think i have to uh, say anything about it especially given the condition with the pandemic and during the pandemic um, i think this one good thing that has happened is we have realized how important it is to be healthy just not physically but also mentally so that's definitely this is this line of work is definitely what the world needs which brings us to the fourth and the most intriguing quadrant of can i get paid for it because i may love painting but my painting may not give me the amount of money i need to run my family now if all of these fuse together that is and i'm not getting into the details anybody wants more information please contact me uh, later i can i can talk for an hour only on ikigai the fusion of passion <clears throat> mission profession and vocation when these elements come together is when we say we are aligned that is when if if there is that part in you if you want to turn your life around heal yourself then go ahead heal the world 
then you are in Nikita. And then that brings us to the, the next part of once you know. So ask yourself these four questions. Um, do you love, would you love doing it? Think of yourself in the future. Do you think you're going to be very good at it? Does the world need it? And can I get paid for it? And personally for me, a few years back, this is exactly what I ticked. I hope, I, I wish I had this with me as a tool then. I didn't have it, but I'm very glad to share it with you. I think it's magnificent. And if, if you see that even 80%, this is resonating with you, <clears throat> moving into the world of mental health, then yes, please, we are more than welcome to help you in that journey. That brings me to, to hypnotherapy, because today we are talking about uh, integrated clinical hypnotherapy. We are talking about this very beautiful modality. Now, I'm just going to quickly check. No, there's nothing on the chat. Does anybody have any idea of what is hypnotherapy? before I go ahead and explain it. Because uh, many times, and I am saying this from my own personal experience, many a times um, it, it so happens that we, um, we have very different ideas about um, hypnotherapy and uh, what it is and what it is not. So if any of you can uh, share, what do you think? Do you have you experienced hypnotherapy? What do you think is hypnotherapy? And I will take it on from there. Yes. Um, yes, it is a journey. Thank you for your responses. It is a journey into our subconscious. It's like a cure. Yes, a cure from our subconscious. <clears throat> Reconnecting with oneself at a deeper level. Yes, all of you are, are spot on. So, um, when, when I say hypnotherapy, okay, people are still responding. So, just give me a moment. Uh, controlling the mind. <laughs> Faisal, no. <clears throat> I'll come to that when I do the theory of mind. It is uh, not necessarily controlling the mind. It's aligning the mind. It's understanding the mind because controlling can be a little tricky. Depends on which part of the mind we are talking about. But yeah, I understand what you're trying to say. It is, it is the alignment. So hypnotherapy is not a new thing. It's not a new science. If you go to the history of it, this is coming from the Astro-Babylonian civilization. It was being practiced by the shamans, um, Egyptian sleep temples, you name it. So this is an ancient science which has always existed. Of course, we call it under the name of uh, hypnosis or hypnotherapy, which comes from the Greek word hypnos, meaning nervous sleep, which in itself is a complete disnomer, right? Like how can you be nervous and sleeping at the same time? So it means hypnosis is a very natural state of mind, natural state of awareness in which the two things that happen. A, your physical body is so relaxed, it is almost like you are falling asleep. That is the sleep part. But your mind is hyperactive. It is extremely agile and it is constantly delving into information and bringing out it. So it is a very deep state of relaxation in which these two things coexist. Physical body gets very relaxed and mind is very agile. Now, everybody is hypnotized each and every single day. There are a lot of myths. I will quickly talk about it. But in essence, when you are um, getting up in the morning, your alarm rings and the first few moments when you're not fully awake and fully asleep is hypnotic trance. And when you are going off to sleep, so you can try tonight, that phase is hypnotic trance. If you're watching Netflix, binge watching, after three minutes, you are in hypnotic trance. That is a very natural state. It is created and uncreated on every day on an ongoing basis. Only when we are doing therapeutic work, 
we are able to do that in a clinical setup. Let me talk about uh, what is not hypnotherapy and what are the biggest myth. And I see that every day as a practicing therapist because I am asked these questions <clears throat> and it is very, um, it's not that people don't know about it, but you know, the way it is portrayed most of the time. So yes, uh, we do not click our fingers and people don't quack like ducks. That doesn't happen in clinical hypnotherapy. Um, you're not helpless under hypnosis, which is the biggest myth. People think that I will fall asleep or I will lose full control. That is not true. Um, it is worked through with your permission and you are a part of you is still very conscious. And at any time, if there is something that is not agreeable, you can come out of the trance and stop the session. So you're not helpless under hypnosis. Not everybody and you, everyone can be hypnotized, no. Everyone can be hypnotized, but <clears throat> it depends <clears throat> on the person. We only work with people who are willing to go into a trance to solve whatever issue they have. Um, we do not catch people from the streets and say, come, let me uh, hypnotize you. Doesn't happen. So technically, everybody can be hypnotized should they give us permission to work on them. Hypnosis is not same as sleeping. Sleeping is when your conscious mind is completely gone <clears throat> and you're fast asleep. You don't know what is happening around you. Hypnosis is like meditation where you are in trance, but you are, you are still there and you are still talking to your therapist. You're still aware of what is happening around you. Hypnosis will make you reveal deep secrets. No, it doesn't happen. Neither therapists go looking for secrets and neither you will spill out your beans unless you want to. And in any case, it's in the boundary of professional ethics. Whatever is shared in the session stays there. But no, I have never come across people um, sharing their deepest, darkest secrets uh, against their will ever. Hypnotherapy is like magic. It's a mystical practice. Yes, trust me, it is not. It is a science. It is a skill that anyone can learn should you want to be a therapist. There is nothing magical. In, in the process. Of course, when when you get the results and when people heal, heal it, is, it is really magical to look at the transformation. So the transformation is magical, but the process is pure scientific clinical practice. It has got no element of mumbo jumbo and magic involved in it. And the last one, uh, hypnotherapists have special powers. No, we don't. We are just as human as any of the others who are not hypnotherapists. We don't have anything special. All we have is we have studied. We have the passion for it. And this is our vocation. We want to um, build a career in it. We, we love working with this line of work. So which brings me to the topic of mind and mind science. And I note there's been a, a question about the difference between mind and brain. And I'm, I'm just about coming to that. Uh, just hold on to your question. So clearly we are talking, we're talking of hypnotherapy, definitely we are talking about the mind. So this is a, a stream, you can see a domain, which is the bigger domain is the science of the mind, in which hypnotherapy is one modality. When you talk of mind, and because this question has also come up, let me ask this, let, let this be open and let this be um, the sharing between all of us. What do you think is your mind? Where do you think is your mind? Can you define mind? Can you share a few words and talk about what you think is mind? And again, there is no right and wrong answer. So you can type in whatever you feel. So imagine if a child asks you, what is mind? How will you describe that to, to someone? And you will see how all of us... Um, we have a different view on it. Maybe it's the conscious part of the brain, uh, Faiza. Uh, yes, it is nothing to do with the brain to begin with. So brain and mind are two different concepts as far as our science is concerned. If something goes wrong with the brain, which means, okay, let me explain that difference first, but uh, let's see if there are any other uh, comments. Mind does not have a form. Yes, perfectly correct. Mind is intangible. 
brain is tangible so the best way to understand this is uh, is your phones like uh, or my laptop right at the moment so i am connecting to you through my laptop which means every time i have to read something every time i have to change a slide i am using the hardware of this laptop to reach out to you the hardware the laptop that i can touch and feel is like our brain now tell me is it enough that i have an hardware that i can connect to you on zoom it's not enough what i need is software which is the powerpoint presentation i'm showing you it's the zoom app that i have that allows me to join you in this forum can i touch zoom or can i touch microsoft fire powerpoint i can't and that is like the mind so the brain is tangible and the mind is the intangible asset with which we are living our life now forget holistic sciences for the time being even if you look at the oxford dictionary definition of it and this is uh, especially faiza because you raised it thank you so much you reminded me of my first day of this training when i just was i was baffled i couldn't understand anything beyond the brain like of course we think through the brain but no even if you go by the oxford dictionary um, definition it says the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and its experiences important part here is it's an element and somebody now mentioned uh, zara said accumulation of thoughts and processes yes perfectly correct to think that is your thought to feel the faculty of consciousness and the faculty of thought that is how you would find the general description of mind if you look around um, dictionary wise now when we are talking about the holistic sciences we say that this mind that we have this intangible asset with which we are living world it is almost like intangible intelligence that keeps us going in life that is the mind but this mind is a tool and it's a very very powerful tool now if you look at the holistic sciences way of defining mind which at the beginning i was mind boggled and i found it very very intriguing the definition of mind as per holistic sciences is mind is a vibrating ball of energy located all around you the center of which is at the pit of your stomach yeah i know it's weird but it is what it is which means imagine if you stand up and imagine that the center of your the pit of your stomach is like the epicenter of a sphere and the mind is this ball of energy intangible you cannot touch it but it is all around you which brings us to a very important point which organ is at the pit of our stomach and if you go inside you go into human physiology you will say it is the intestines the small intestines in particular and another word for small intestine is the gut and that is the reason why we use this term gut feeling now think of it logically gut is only part of our gastrointestinal system which means the function of the gut is to digest the food we eat but then why do each one of us i'm pretty sure in some point in your lives we have said i have a gut feeling about this person i have a gut feeling it's going to rain tomorrow i have a gut feeling something good is going to happen i have a gut feeling this deal is going to fail which means there is a higher intelligence in our gut which is the position of the epicenter of our mind where this intelligence is so as and when and if it interests you if you come for the program of course the day one of level 1 is all about the mind uh, but for now i think if you understand it from the perspective of the brain being the hardware Uh, Faiza, I think that answers your question now. And the mind is the software. So the mind works on the brain. And when it works on the brain, the brain then secretes certain chemicals, and then our body functions. This is how we look at um, health, physical, mental, spiritual health in terms of um, holistic sciences. very very quickly i'll give you a gist because somebody mentioned about conscious mind i think in the chat 
maybe it's a conscious part yeah faiza you you mentioned it so yeah so no keep the brain aside see if there is a problem with the brain it is a hardware problem which means we have to go to a doctor we have to go to a psychiatrist who will give us medication to fix the chemical imbalance in our brains we go into neuroscience we are going into psychiatry we are going into medical science there now if the issue is not with the hardware there's nothing wrong with my brain but i i suffer from anxiety disorder this means i have my problem lies not in the hardware my hardware my body is fine the problem actually is in the software and it's more difficult to understand because it is intangible if this is the mind the vibrating ball of energy all around us which um the center of which is at the pit of my stomach of course this mind as we all know it has two parts it has conscious mind and it has subconscious mind now this diagram think of it as a iceberg so the conscious mind is like one tenth and it is above water and below it is the subconscious mind so roughly conscious mind is around 10% subconscious mind is around 90% what do we do with our uh, conscious mind all of these functions we think we logic we analyze we decide we feel all our cognitive functions which also means that we are using this mind to actually live our lives completely then the question automatically comes then what is the subconscious mind doing and look at the size of it it's like 90% of the capacity of the mind and here begins our beautiful story subconscious mind doesn't do so many things it just does two things two functions function number 1 is survival subconscious mind keeps us alive let me give you an example if i say that okay team let's uh, switch on our cameras and each one of you raise your right hand and wave at me i'm pretty sure each one of you will oblige me as doing this mundane activity of raising your right hand and waving at me so it's so easy for us to control our bodies then by the same logic now i'll tell you don't wave right hand on to me stop the functioning of your liver for the next 10 seconds now each one of you can try and tell me if you are able to control the functioning of your liver or your kidney or your uh, spleen for the next 10 seconds and i don't have to wait for 10 seconds because the answer is no it's a stupid question to ask the answer is no because conscious mind controls voluntary movement like my hands my face my body uh, my legs my parts of the body i can move voluntarily only 10% subconscious mind is the custodian and controls internal body function it is the autopilot that keeps you and me alive and that we cannot control with our conscious mind and hence even if we want to stop our liver from functioning for the next 10 minutes or we want to clean our liver in the next 1 uh, hour it's not going to happen because we consciously cannot control it that's number 1 the function of the subconscious mind it keeps us alive number 2 it is like the hard drive of your computer so imagine your conscious mind like your cpu your central processing unit constantly data is being churned and your subconscious mind is the database uh, is the archive is the hard drive what do you do in your hard drive you just save your files and that is exactly what subconscious mind does subconscious mind stores data not only from the time that you are born it actually stores data from the time you were conceived in your mother's womb so prenatal going into you being born and then till this very moment now the it 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 doesn't stop here it's so intriguing it just gets better because the fact is if the strength of the conscious mind is 1 times x the strength of the subconscious mind is 6000 times x and i'm going to take a pause here because this is very important for us to understand this is the reason why i want to lose weight but i cannot 
I'm trying all the diets, but my weight doesn't go. So who is saying I want to lose weight is my conscious mind. And there is some blockage, there's some pattern deep inside my subconscious where I am completely unable to lose weight. I want to quit smoking, I cannot. I want to earn money, I cannot earn money. I want a stable job, I never get a stable job. There are so many. I, I want a, a, a loving partner, a harmonious relationship. I'm always alone. These are just examples when the alignment between the conscious and the subconscious is off. And guess what? If there is a tug of war between conscious and subconscious, who is going to win? 1x or 6,000 times x? And there lies the story of all our lives. So all those logical questions that you have for yourself, which you can't answer, like, for example, I can manage everything. Why on earth can I not find a good loving partner? The answer to that probably lies in the depths of your subconscious mind. And as I said, this subconscious mind is just not our modern memory, which is our life's memory. It can also, it also stores what we call as primitive memory. This is your DNA, genetics. For people who believe in past lives, this is your past lives. For people who believe in ancestral lives, if you don't believe in past life, it's one and the same. We are not here to propagate one over the other. It's your ancestral memories. It's your evolutionary memory that has come down the line through generations. And it is also where we store the two most important um, responses that we have, our innate primal fight and flight responses. And then there is also another part of the mind, the third part of the mind, what we call as the critical mind. And this is a mind that develops in the first eight years of our lives. Um, in very simple terms, this is your belief systems that have been formed due to conditioning. When I say conditioning, I refer to the word C or there, S for socio, E for education, E for economic, and R for religious beliefs. All of these put together. Imagine this software. We said, remember we said mind is a software. This software is programmed, developed in the first eight years of our life. Then these belief systems get fixed. And the rest of our lives, we are just repeating those belief systems. And from again, from my experience as a practicing therapist, I'm not good enough. Money is evil. Um, I don't deserve love. I don't deserve money. I am good for nothing. These are examples of belief systems, unconscious. Nobody consciously wants to believe it. Unconscious belief systems which impact our lives going forward. Now, uh, none of us are eight years old and it sounds very morbid when I say that it's fixed in the first eight years of our life. It's a true, it's a truth, but hypnotherapy, why we are talking about this is, is one way of working on issues, two things. One, redundant belief systems that are stuck in your critical filter in your mind and B, recurring patterns that are coming from subconscious mind, that the experiences that we have had in life which we cannot break cognitively because when there is a tug of war between conscious and subconscious. So the job of us as hypnotherapists is, as I said, it's not magical. Um, we are not psychics reading into uh, the mind. To the contrary, our job, my job, for example, when I'm practicing as a therapist, I'm like a GPS. It is your car, it is your petrol, and it is your destination. My job is to take you to your destination in the fastest, easiest, effortless way possible. Which means when we practice hypnotherapy, we are taking permission from the conscious mind. We are breaking through redundant belief systems. And those files that you see there, imagine some of the files are corrupted. Say somebody comes and says, you know, I have, um, my case, I have motion sickness, which means there were files in my subconscious mind that were corrupted. So imagine what will happen if you have corrupted files in your hard drive. Every time you start your system, it's going to crash. That is exactly what was happening to me. Every time I sit in a car, there's a problem. 
Now, in hypnotherapy, we break through the layers. We go straight. Point number one, we diagnose where the problem is. And we pick that file. So now imagine I have the file. I know this is the corrupted file. We don't erase the file. This is not Harry Potter pulling away memories. No. We neutralize it. So the memory will still stay. Let me give you a different example. Say client comes and says that I have an extreme fear of dogs. Every time I see even a small little puppy, I, I am like a shivering. I want to overcome that. Now, when we start doing the therapy, probably we realize that when client was three years old, she was bitten by a dog and then it was very painful injections. And this entire experience has left a file in the client's mind as corrupted, which means what is a corrupted file? A file which has, file has two parts. File has the fact. The fact remains that I was bitten by a dog when I was three years old and it was very, very painful. The second thing that the file contains is emotional charge. That is what we work on and that is what we neutralize. So when client heals, client doesn't forget that I was bitten by dog. Client will still remember it. But now when a dog comes in front of her and she's 30 years old, she will not have the same psychosomatic reaction that she has had throughout her life. Why? Because that's charge. Why was she having a reaction in the first place? It is because from the space of being 6,000 times stronger, that emotion was coming out. Now when we neutralize it, she is in charge of her life as the adult of today. So the child part in her that was reacting is neutralized. That in very simple words, of course, I'm simplifying the example. There are tools, there are techniques involved in it, is how we work with hypnotherapy. We dissociate the client that the experience of the bite is not you. You are somebody else. You're separate. You had an experience of a bite. And once we are able to detach, client is able to release the toxicity. So in very, again, in a different way, in a simple sentence, the goal of any therapy, especially hypnotherapy, is to reprogram our thoughts, our belief systems, so that we can have a different reality today. And how do we do that? We do that by healing out all the subconscious patterns, all the big redundant belief systems that are in conflict with our conscious desires today. So if my conscious desire is to have a loving partner in my life and I'm not able to do that, I have tried everything cognitively, nothing else works, then it's probably time to look at what is stuck in the subconscious that creates blocks and patterns into achieving that goal. I think I have had a long monologue with uh, theory of mind. I'm quickly going to check the chat box. And Pfizer says 6,000. Yes. It, um, the subconscious mind is anywhere. Different schools of thoughts have different um, views. Anywhere between 6,000 to 35,000 times stronger than the conscious mind. And hence, it is like, you know, it is like one part of the mind speaking in English and the other part of the mind speaking in Mandarin. And they don't understand each other's language. Our job as hypnotherapists is to align them, become the translator so that they are in alignment. Which brings me to, we, we discussed this, that um, hypnosis is not going to la-la land, is not getting lost in limbo. It is just uh, another state of mind, state of awareness in which, as you see, when you are awake, like we are awake now, our conscious mind, our subconscious mind is both awake and in control. When we go to sleep at night, conscious mind has no control. Conscious mind is also sleeping. But if you look at this slide, subconscious mind is always awake and always in control. And that is because we are alive. The day subconscious mind is not awake, not in control, is the day we are no longer living. So that's a given. The only difference is in the state of the conscious mind. And as you see, for under hypnosis, conscious mind is still awake. The only difference is it is not in control. And those are the techniques we use induction to take 
client into that state where they are still awake. It's not forgetting consciously what is happening, but the conscious mind doesn't interfere in the healing process. Now, why is hypnotherapy a very um, good way of entering the world of um, healing? I, as I said, I personally began with this therapy and then of course I did other, ther other studies and other therapies later. Why I would say hypnotherapy is a very, very effective yet very easy way to get in is because if you ask me, it's almost like a life skill. Like how we learn to ride a bike and how we learn to swim. This is a science that I think everybody should know. And if you ask me personally, I believe this should be taught in school because um, had we known this, the basics of how the mind works um, in primary, um, elementary or high school, the choices in our lives would be very different. Uh, again, for anybody who is worried that, you know, what if something goes wrong, this modality is one of the safest modalities. And why is it safest? It is because what are you working with? You are working with subconscious mind. And the agenda of the subconscious mind is to keep you safe, is to keep you alive. Hence, affecting the client badly is very, very rare unless, you know, something really goes off or somebody has a bad agenda, which is not the case. So it's, it's like a life skill. It is extremely safe. And it is extremely effective. If you look at this data, it's from the American um, Health Magazine. And it, this, it shows the effectiveness of this line of work. This is not to say that other therapies don't work. Of course, each therapy has a place and it depends on the client what will work or not. But hypnotherapy, as you see, the recovery rate is way high, above 90%, 93% only after six sessions, compared to if you look at behavioral therapy, which takes way longer. It's not that it doesn't work, but it is hypnotherapy is you go there directly and you go there way fast. And again said that, um, this is not against any other modality. Um, each modality works in a different way for different people. I'm going to take the question, is it possible to be hypnotherapist and do your own hypnotherapy yourself? Yes, Faiza, it is possible. So even in the, in the first uh, level of the course that I'm talking about today, integrated clinical hypnotherapy, you learn a part, a process called self-hypnosis. So yes, you can uh, work on yourself. But if this is something that you're new to, my recommendation would be that you work with a certified therapist and then you can integrate it for yourself. But technically, self-hypnosis is a healing tool that you can use. Now, million dollar question, I get this asked all the time. What are the prerequisites to become a hypnotherapist? Now, there is no prerequisite except the fact that you feel, as we said right from the beginning, if this is your ikigai, if this is what you would love to do, if this will come naturally to you, does the world around you need it? And will you be able to earn money? And that is the qualification that is needed. All we need is that open-mindedness. If the subconscious mind and the workings of the mind really intrigue you, you have the zest for learning. You can come from any field. You can, you can be of any age. You can be of any gender, any culture, any nationality. I have been teaching this course for over two years now. And I can tell you from my students, I have had 65-year-olds and I have had 18-year-olds. I have had uh, school teachers, homemakers, corporate uh, honchos. I've got uh, doctors, nurses. Uh, sports personalities, everyone. I, there is no one way of saying this is for you. This is for everyone. And that's where I call it a life skill because it is truly a life skill. The only thing you need is that you're interested and you want to join. Where can you join? Um, I studied the same course. I teach the same course. So if you want to know more about the ECA course, you can go to their website. Uh, eka.co.in uh, Illuminations holds the franchisee of Eka in, in Dubai so you can reach out we train in Dubai we train in Abu Dhabi 
it is an on-site course because it is very important for you as students to not only do the theory part but also practice face to face with your colleagues with your friends in class and we of course every month we hold a support groups which means students from all the levels join us and um, there is ongoing support the teachers are also the mentors so they see you through the entire process uh questions more questions let me take a pause here if i learn hypnotherapy do i get a certification and what are these certifications will you be teaching clinical hypnotherapy abhinga yes and yes answer to both your questions is yes you will get certified so uh where is this this is the course this is the one that i was just talking to you about these are the five levels so after each level you are certified at the end of each level so after level 1 you get a certificate after level 2 you get a certificate so on and so forth it's a total as you see 2 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 8 a long course it is detailed it is very well planned out it is an iso certified training program after level 2 you start to work on real life cases so you become an intern with us um the teachers which is me and the other teachers are available to help you with your real life case studies you submit those case studies and after level 5 and when you submit your case studies you have to do 10 case studies you get a final certification from eka this certificate is valid all around the world and specifically for uae if you are interested to practice here this course and the certificate is attested by the khda so coming to your question on certifications eka will certify you at uh, certify you at every level final certification after submission of your case studies and your interview you can get the final certificate through illuminations because illuminations is registered and acknowledged by um, case khda so you, like in my final certificate i have the stamp of khda there apart from the local uh, attestation and recognition here If you go to the ECA website, you will see there are so many other international bodies like the IMDHA, IPHM, Tasso Institute, Netherlands. There, are, the list is ongoing. With your final certification, you can actually become members of these bodies. So let me. I think I. Oh, what happened? Screen sharing went away. I wanted. Let me show you. these ones you see these certifications here these are all the uh, certifications that you can avail after you have completed your level 5 so th these ones here um, the earth the uh, no sorry not the earth but the imdha the eca the iphm all of them let me check if there was any other questions yeah i teach i do teach the level 1 and 2 so if you are interested to join the course i will see you in level 1 for sure and then when can you start now i think is a good idea um the, it's no longer available online this is an old slide my apologies uh, it's on site it's level 1 is a two day course and when is the next level it's in august august 6th and 7th is our next level 1 if you have more questions about the course you can book a consult a free consultation we offer um, 20 minutes free consultation half an hour free consultation you can chat with me with me one on one if you have any other queries then you register and then you start your journey so that is all i had in terms of the content for today now of course if there are questions i'm here i'm going to answer and i i will now go through the chat to just check if there is anything that i have missed can i briefly explain the levels of course so level 1 is two day program in this two days you learn the in, to begin with you learn the theory of the mind which i have given you a very brief understanding today you learn in details the theory of mind you learn induction techniques so you learn how to take people into uh trans and take people out of trans you learn self hypnosis in level 1 you learn human behavior the theory of suggestibility by john capus um yeah that's level 1 when you go to level 2 you are then now going into um 
the therapy mode, which means in level two, you learn behavioral resolution. So now level two and three becomes your toolkit. So what do you learn? You learn body syndromes, you learn techniques like age regression, void, passive aggressive behavior, family dysfunctionalities, fears, treating fears and phobias, so on and so forth. So by level three, it's like you've built your uh, toolkit now completely. Western clinical hypnotherapy. How do we do it in class? I teach the theory, I do a demo, you practice and I supervise, I observe you. Now, when you move to level four and five, now you are entering the domain of energy sciences, you're getting into the metaphysics. So that's where you learn about, for example, diagnosis through chakras, you will learn about um, ego states therapies. That's where ancestral lives, uh, evolutionary lives, past lives come in. Uh, what else do you do? Life scripting, uh, reframing, other techniques of induction, that, as I explained through, um, through the chakras, uh, through RRT. So now when you finish level five, you have a good mix of, it's like a buffet of clinical hypnotherapeutic tools. You have the metaphysical tools. You finish your 10 cases through this journey. You start to do your cases after uh, you complete level two. And then you finish your interview. You're out there certified as a clinical hypnotherapist. Uh, let me know if that answers your question on um, explaining the levels. And if you want to know in any one of them in more details, how much do they charge? Uh, I will have to request illuminations to send you all the details. Different levels are charged at different, um, there's different pricing because the number of days and the content is very different as well, but I will ask them to send you the details. Akia says, thank you, thanks. I'm more than welcome. If, is there any way the therapist gets drained giving this therapy? And uh, no. <sighs> You know, it's a thank you for raising this question because a lot of people say, oh my God, like I will be drained. In this course, you will be taught how to protect yourself, your energy, your sanity, your centeredness. So by the time you do level five, there are tools and techniques for us as therapists to remain very centered, very grounded, not drained. To the contrary, let me tell you, it's, it's like, you know, uh, how do I explain this? Okay, imagine I have my phone. Now, if I use my phone throughout the day, by the end of the day, it is discharged. That is the kind of drain. So if we are doing um, the therapies without being centered, without being, uh, when I say protection, I don't mean energetic protection. I, I'm meaning, I mean, we are in ourselves. It's like you learn how to plug in. So imagine if I'm using my phone, but my charger is plugged on to the main switch, which means I'm actually downloading that energy that I need from a bigger source. So no, I don't feel drained. I can teach. In fact, when I'm teaching, I, I'm teaching from nine in the morning to six in the evening and I'm full of energy. When I'm doing my sessions, I don't feel uh, drained. Uh, if, if a therapist is feeling drained, it means probably there is some trigger that has come up and that's when we work with others to heal our own triggers. It may happen in the beginning, but um, no, it is not. The course teaches you to be a therapist. It is just not giving you tools and saying, now go work with it. You become a therapist. It's a becoming process. And hence, this course is five levels. It is not a three-day online thing that you learn and you're gone. No, it's a practice. And you practice and you practice for these 26 days and you become a therapist. Uh, thank you so much. I would love to have a free consult. Yeah, absolutely. Please, uh, you can contact Illuminations and um, please ask for me. Please ask for a free consult. I'll be more than happy. You can come in person and see me at the center or you could do a Zoom consultation, whatever works for you. I'm just going to see if there are any other questions. Patricia. How many days do you need between each level? It is very subjective, Patricia. Sometimes, um, not now, but I know that these programs were sometimes done in the US and definitely done in India as a one month retreat. 
So there are people who have gone, stayed there for a month and completed all the levels. So technically there is no mandate that there needs to be a gap. People do it at their pace. So I have seen from my students, I can tell you people completing it in four months to somewhere between say, say four months to 18 months is how people complete it very, very personal because some people, they love it so much. They just want to do bang, 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 finish it off. Some people, they have, you know, other things to do. They're probably working, they have families and they take their time. The right answer you will know when you start. There is no mandate, but uh, completely, completely up to you. I do have a question. I do have questions, but maybe one-on-one -on -one session. Yeah, of course, uh, Faiza, you can definitely book a consult if you have questions that you want to ask one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, I did mention there are assignments. So after level one, you don't have assignments. But yes, I recommend as your teacher to practice what you've learned. Master your induction after level one. Level two onwards, the assignments are case studies. So you will end up working with people, real people, real world, real issues, using what you've learned in this course and bring it to a conclusion. You will have to record the case studies. Uh, audio recording as well as writing it down like uh, written recording and those recordings and the cases need to come to the teachers for evaluation we evaluate it we send it back to you after your level five you go and submit all 10 cases together to the um, uh, to eka they will have an interview with you and you become a therapist so after level two two case studies after level three two more after level four, three more, and after level five, three more. So total 10 cases. These are the case studies are the assignments. You're working with real people. There's a lot of stuff available on YouTube. Can we consider it safe or is it better under supervision? I don't know what which stuff you are uh, talking about, Faiza, but I always, person, my personal opinion is, uh, you learn it from the right institute. Uh, you are supervised. That's the reason we have demos in class. That's the reason we do practice sessions in class. Um, so I cannot comment what is safe or not. I can definitely comment on the course that we teach is completely safe. It is under supervision and you learn in, through that process. Okay. Most welcome, Faisal. Most welcome. Okay, I will be around for the next few minutes. If you have any questions, you can ask. You're most welcome. I, I, it's my pleasure to share this information because I, I do believe this should be out and about and much more than how it is shown nowadays or it, it's been there always like mambo jumbo it's not it is a very clean science um, it's a healing science thank you so much everyone for uh, joining me today i had a fun time i loved interacting with you thank you for your questions and all the remarks that you had on the chat and um, Definitely. I, I know a lot of you have said that you would want consults and you, um, you'll meet me. I'm more than welcome. I will see you soon for consults. Probably I will see you in class for the next batch. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you, Patricia.